Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to unbrick or reset the password in any modern laptop not made by Apple. Now this guide will also show you how to install Core Boot or Lieber Boot onto many laptops as well. So, this is an HP Elite Book. Um, uh, this is a little hard to push. This is an Elite Book 8460p. Now, this laptop has some issues. The most notable one being it's BIOS locked. And you have to enter in a password to use it. It will not boot up whatsoever unless you enter in this password. So, until then, it's just a useless brick. However, with this guide, you can flash any laptop with another BIOS image to get rid of the password or unbrick it or to install another firmware. Now, might as well put a little legal disclaimer here. If you're doing this to a laptop that you stole, this is 100% illegal. So, do not do that unless you want to risk getting arrested or something. Just don't. But if you're doing this because you forgot the password or you were given this laptop by somebody who forgot to remove the password and, and you know, um, you say you live in a country where HP support isn't exactly going to help you with that, like I've heard of this with people living in countries outside the US, then you will want to do this. And the same goes if you did a BIOS update and it bricked your laptop. Or if you're using your laptop and you want to put on Core Boot or Lieber Boot. So I'm going to show you how to do it now and exactly what you need. So the first thing you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi or a clone of it. Now, stuff like the Orange Pi or Banana Pi will work too. All you need is the GPIO pins, which, as you can see here, have the required connections to hook up the flash chip to this. Second thing you're going to need are a bunch of female-to-female -female jumper wires, because these are going to go from here to the clip, which I'm going to show next. And the third thing you're going to need is the BIOS flasher clip. Now, this right here is a flasher clip that clips onto the chip itself, and then you will plug it into the Pi using the jumper wires. So, let's hook this up. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at the pinout numbers. It should be labeled 1234567 keep this in mind because you're going to need to know this when you plug the uh, jumper cables into the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug the cable from the clip into this, keyed side up. Now if your clip did not come with cables, you can plug the jumper wires directly into it, but I like this approach because it's much cleaner. So you're going to want to plug it into it with the keyed side up, as you can see here and you're going to want to you're going to want to plug it in there. So, let's do this. All right. So, now that we've plugged the wire into the clip itself, we're going to want to plug the clip into the laptop. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to disconnect all power sources from the laptop. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to flip the laptop over and we're going to get into it. Now, this HP Elite Book is a great laptop to show you how to do it because the flash chip that we're going to be clipping the uh, clip onto is in a very easy spot to get to. So we're going to have to just remove this. And we're going to pull it out. And now we're at the bottom of the laptop. Now. It all depends on the laptop where the chip is going to be. So you're going to want to look at your service manual for the laptop to find out where it's at. But on this laptop, it's in a very easy spot. 
and that is right over here. Now as you can see there is a chip with 8 pins on it. Sometimes it'll be 16 pins, but it's going to be an 8 pin chip right over here on this laptop. On some it'll be buried underneath stuff, so you might need to disassemble laptop some. But you're going to want to get to this chip in particular because that is going to be where it's at. Now the markings on this chip are very small, but according to what it says on there, the model number starts with 25. And if you Google the whole model number of the chip, you'll see that it is definitely a flash chip. So we know for sure that this is the right chip to clip onto. As it's distinct, it's only 8 pins, it's big enough for the clip, and it's what I'm going to be clipping onto to flash the system. Thankfully, it isn't an easy to get to spot on this laptop, so we don't need to disassemble it anymore. Now, when it comes to aligning the clip, remember, pin 1 is marked with a round dot. And on this clip, pin 1 is marked with a red ribbon. So, pin 1 on the ribbon is going to be aligned with the side where pin 1 on the chip is. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to check to be sure any sort of wire is free enough from where the chip is. So, you might need to remove something like whatever this board is. Alright, so I ran into a little snag while taking this apart. Apparently, I had to remove the bottom cover to get to the board because there wasn't enough clearance to just attach a clip to it. This did involve removing the heat sink on this particular laptop, however, so the thing is, with if you remove a heat sink on a laptop, you have to apply new paste to it, which I'll have to do. Anyhow, what you're going to want to do to flash the laptop, the first thing you'll want to do is you're going to want to look at the, the flash chip. Now there should be a little round dot on one of the corners of the chip. That dot marks where pin 1 is located. We're going to want to align pin 1 of the chip with the flasher clip. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to plug the clip onto the chip. We're going to want to attach it there, just like that, with pin 1 lined up where pin 1 on the chip is. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's a good connection right there. Don't know if you can see it too well in the video, but it should look secure. It should look like it's secured on the chip itself. And if all the pins look like they're touching the pins on the clip, the connection looks good. Now we're going to wire it up. So, to help me wire this thing up, I actually printed out this web page, which I'm going to link in the description and also show in this video in case the web page ever goes down. So, what you're going to want to do is here's a pinout of the Raspberry Pi, at least the original Raspberry Pi, and here's its GPIO pins. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug in these GPIO pins to that clip right here. So here's how it's going to work. Pin 1 goes to pin 24, pin 2 goes to 21, 3 is not used, pin 4 goes to 25, pin 5 goes to pin 19, pin 6 goes to pin 23, pin 7 is not used, pin 8 goes to pin 17 you're going to want to plug this in just like that so that the Raspberry Pi detects the chip and so you can flash it using the flash ROM utility on Linux. So I'm going to go wire this up and then I'm going to come back. Once the clip is properly connected to the Raspberry Pi it should look like this. There should be wires going from the GPIO to the board in between to the clip properly aligned. Now that this is hooked up, we're going to take a little detour and we're going to have to use a laptop. You can do this on a Raspberry Pi 2, but it'll be slower because Raspberry Pis are a bit slow, if you know what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a website called badcaps.net forum. Now there's some other sites with the same thing. 
but this site has a lot of bio stumps for laptops in the laptop forum of their site. Now, sometimes you won't find in the original post, you'll find threads like people asking for it, and then if you scroll down, you'll find somebody making a post with it, so you're going to want to click that, and you're going to want to save it. You're going to have to make an account, just so you know. Some of the other sites you don't need to make accounts at, though, but I'm just using badcaps.net because they have the bio stump file. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to extract it with 7-zip, and you're going to want to hit copy. You're going to want to go to uh, D, which is your flash drive, because you're going to need a flash drive for this. And you're going to want to copy it to a flash drive. Then when it's all done copying, you're going to quit out of here. And we're going to unplug it. And then this is all we're going to need this laptop for. So now we're going to actually flash it. All right, so everything's connected. The Raspberry Pi to the laptop, and to the keyboard, mouse, and monitor, along with the flash drive. So let's plug it in. And eventually it'll change colors, the monitor will, as it boots. It'll go from being amber to green because it's booting up. If you see a lightning bolt in the corner for too long, you'll have to switch power bricks because it's not gaining enough power or it's drawing too much. So, anyhow, this is connected. It's booting. It might take a few seconds to boot because these Raspberry Pis are not exactly the fastest computers. And if you see a green LED flashing, it is in fact booting, so be patient. So, all right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to dump the ROM, and we're going to want to do this three times. So what you're going to want to type in is flash ROM dash P Linux underscore SPI dev dev slash SPI dev 0, 0.0 dash R, and then the name of it. So we're going to name this 8460p one dot bin. We're going to hit enter. And of course, it's asking for the chip. So you're going to have to look at the chip to see what kind it is. All right, so I scraped a little bit of paint off the chip and I was able to find out what kind of chip it was. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go load up what we typed in, and you'll have to do this with Macronix chips, and we're going to add to it dash C, and then we're going to put, um, we're going to copy this, we're going to paste, we're going to press enter, and what's going to do is it's going to read the flash chip out. This is going to take a few minutes, depending on the size of the chip and that stuff. So what's going to happen is it's going to read out the chip. You're going to want to wait as it reads out and then come back in a few minutes. So this is enough time to say get them out and do and drink it, do some other stuff and whatnot and come back and then it'll be done. So then I'm going to tell you what to do next once it's done. Alright, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type in um, you're going to want to type in SHA512SUM8460P1.bin And you're going to want to do this with every file you dump. And the reason for that is you want to make sure that it's getting a good readout of the chip. So now we're going to dump it again, but we're going to change the file name to 8460p2.bin. So let's come back in a few minutes and see if it did anything. So, second file's been dumped, 
let's see what it says. Um, 8460p2 dop in. And as you can see, it matches. So, we're doing it right. We're going to make one more dump, check that, and then we're going to flash it for real. So, let's do the usual. Change it to 3 dot bin. And now let's come back later. All right, guess what? Third time's the charm. So it is, in fact, reading out the chip just fine, which is great. Now we're going to run a different command. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out the files in the folder. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to flash it. So we're going to type in same command we were using earlier. Um, it's actually... Uh, dash w instead so we're going to type in flash rom dash p and the usual we're going to scroll up here we're going to add the uh the chip definition type in the command line to it so we're going to add this here and now we're going to then add to the end after dash w the file name for the BIOS. So we're going to add in quotation marks uh, to the very end. And we're going to hit enter. So now what it's doing is it's reflashing the chip with the new image. And this is going to take longer than simply reading it out because it's going to overwrite the old image with the new one. So give it some time. It's going to take a while. If it looks like it's frozen, it's still doing its thing. So just wait a few minutes. Alright, so what you're going to want to do is, once it's done flashing, you're going to want to make sure it says reading old flash chip contains done, erase in writing flash chip, erase write done, and verifying flash verified. If it says it's verified, you can shut the Raspberry Pi down and then unplug it. And then you can remove the clip from the motherboard because you have now just flashed your laptop with the new BIOS. Now you will want to put the laptop back together, which also means that if you did remove the heat sink like in this case, you will have to put on new thermal compound on your laptop heat sink. I'd recommend using something non-conductive like Antec Formula 7 or something instead of something like Arctic Silver unless you're willing to apply it the correct way. But that's just me though. Anyhow, I'm going to put this back together now and show you if it worked. Alrighty, I have put the laptop back together and as we can see the laptop's working great as you can see it, it seems to work just fine however until management engine is in recovery mode which means that on this laptop in particular because I flashed over with a different bio stump it means that um, Intel management engine is not working and the Ethernet chip will be disabled until you reboot it however this does mean that at least um, you can use the laptop again now you can put in a hard disk boot off an OS and stuff it's great so this laptop went from being unusable completely to usable. So yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe for more tech videos.